everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. Wow, this is going to be a good one. I found a gem. This is in Doctrinal New Testament Commentary by Bruce R. McConkie. But uh, this wasn't originally what I was reading. I was just going to continue reading from Doctrines of Salvation Volume 3, which led me through a process where I ended up here. And I found something fascinating that has to do with Joseph Smith. Uh, President Russell M. Nelson, and some things that uh, you may not know. Um, there's a couple things I've shared on the channel a couple times. So I'm bringing some of those back up because some of the newer subscribers uh, may not have seen this. But uh, man, I just I got to show you what I found here. Uh, so first, let, let's just do it in the order that I was doing it. So this will be kind of like more toward the end, okay? Um, well, this first part should go pretty quickly. Okay, so, um, you'll recall, you know, we were talking about uh, last time, the day of the Lord is near. We were talking about how tomorrow is the day of the second coming, meaning the 7,000 years, the millennial day, right? The next section after that says, some now living may see second coming. Now, this is from Joseph Fielding Smith, okay? And sorry about my son in the background. He's autistic and he's upset at something. Um, this is April 5th, 1936. Okay. April 5th, 1936. The day of the coming is near. Or sorry, the day of the coming of the Lord is near. I do not know when. Okay. So the prophet is saying he does not know when. I am looking, however, upon... I am not looking, however, upon the coming of the Son of Man as I looked once upon the day when men would speak from city to city and throughout the land without the aid of wires and would be heard as something that may come in some far distant time. Okay, so Joseph Fielding Smith, a prophet, he's not looking at the second coming as something that's way just far out there. There's so much to do. Uh, we're not even close. Okay, he continues, because I sincerely believe it will come in the very day when some of us who are here today, April 5th, 1936, will be living upon the face of the earth. That day is close at hand. It behooves us as Latter-day Saints to set our houses in order, to keep the commandments of God, to turn from evil to righteousness, if it is necessary, and serve the Lord in humility and faith and prayer. Okay, so... That was his attitude toward the second coming. And he even thought, uh, now it was his opinion. He says, I sincerely believe um, that some then living in 1936. And, uh, you know, we have people right now uh, that are still alive from 1936 and before. And we're going we're gonna to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, before you start typing, we're going to get to that. Okay, so... I wanted to just kind of do a review of like similar statements that we had heard before that kind of goes along with this. If you go to the um, August 2002 Ensign, this is in the August 2002 Ensign. This is not in some person's book, you know, that you buy at Deseret Book. Uh, th this is, this was published in the end sign and i know that for some reason there's people that are like well you know they don't like treat it as though that gives any authority to it now uh not uh, the, there's articles submitted to the end sign that are from like scholars and people like that so i guess you could make the argument well you know that person's not a prophet or da 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 da, da. but you know what the ensign, do you, do you know who maybe reads the ensign? I'm thinking that there are people like maybe the prophet, uh, the first presidency, the quorum of the 12, the 70, the presiding bishopric, stake presidents, so on and so forth. So if something is going to be published in the ensign and it's just like way off base, where it's like, no, that that is not that is false doctrine, or that's like really big. Spe I don't think that it would make the cut for the ensign. Okay, I don't know the process by which the ensign is put together. To be fair, 
But I can't imagine a scenario where the ensign is published, okay, in some general authority, any of them. Uh, th there's also the, you know, the Relief Society, General Presidency, and so forth, the leadership of the church. I can't imagine a situation where something's published in the ensign, something just like slips through, and then a general authority is reading it and they're like, hey, what the heck? What? What? What is it saying? This got published? No, I don't think so. Um, there's got, there's some sort of, there has to be some sort of mechanism where they make sure that things that are, um, doctrinally correct are, are put in and things that are doctrinally not correct are sorted out. Okay. So please use that logic as we read this. So this is an article here. I'm going to highlight this so we can easily get back to it. This is the prophet Joseph Smith's use of the old Testament by Grant Underwood. Okay. And, um, you know, I should have looked up who that is. Let's see, LDS Grant Underwood. I know that I did in a previous video because I've, he's come up before. Uh, Grant Revan Underwood is a historian of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a professor at BYU. He's also the author of The Millennial World of Early Mormonism and the editor of Voyages of Faith, Explorations in Mormon Pacific History. Okay, so... He says here in this paragraph, this is under affirming its literal meaning. Um, the prophet Joseph Smith believed in a rigorous adherence to the literal meaning of the biblical text. Quote, what is the rule of interpretation? He asked, just no interpretation at all. It should be understood precisely as it reads. All right, so an example of this was his use of Amos 3.7. Okay, what does Amos 3, 7 say? It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so the Lord's not going to do anything until he reveals it to the prophet. Uh, furthermore, there's a Joseph Smith translation in uh, footnote A. He changes it in, uh, he changes, but to until. So, surely the Lord God will do nothing until he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? So, that's Amos 3.7. <clears throat> so, an example of this was his use of Amos 3.7 to refute speculation about the date of the second coming. In the early 1840s, Baptist uh, William Miller, or Father Miller, uh, stirred considerable national interest with his prediction that the second coming would occur in 1943. Okay, and we've looked at this guy before, and we've looked at his original uh, timeline, and it looks just like all the timelines that you see today. You know, you do a Google search, just do a Google search. Um, you know, second coming timeline. Go to images. And you come across just all these different timelines from all different sources, all different calculations, just, just all these timelines. And, um, you know, one of them, I think you can still, okay, let's see, uh, William Miller, second coming timeline, his original timeline, here it is right here, uh, here it is right here, it, you know, it's just this really super specific timeline, you know, using all these different things, you know, 1,260 days, 1,290 days, just, I, I've done, I've already gone through this really extensively. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to make any further mention of it here, but you, you go look at my playlist called the book of revelation, also the book of Daniel, also, uh, my playlist called symbolism. Check out those three uh, playlists. I, I go into that it really in depth. Okay, so anyway, so you had Baptist William Miller doing that kind of thing. So in the early 18, okay, so his prediction was 1843 based on calculations from the Bible. When one of Miller's followers claimed to have seen the quote, sign of the son of man, 
uh, as predicted in Matthew 24. Joseph replied, quote, He has not seen the sign of the Son of Man, as foretold by Jesus, neither has any man, for the Lord hath not shown me any such sign. And as the prophet saith, so it must be, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now, so this is interesting because what kind of things do the prophets uh, maybe see that maybe we don't we don't know of? But, you know, whenever there's like something that the Lord is doing in the world, um, just look at what Joseph Smith says here that, you know, no, that's not right because it hasn't been revealed to me. But on the flip side, you know, think about things that happened like the tsunami in Japan in 2011. Uh, think about... 2017 with the great american eclipse uh think about now here, here's maybe the best example think about when angel moroni dropped his trumpet from the salt lake temple uh, in 2020 and then two days later that's when um the missionaries are brought home now you might say well th they were going to be brought home anyway because covid it's just a coincidence that it happened at the same time but it happened literally two days after angel moroni dropped his trumpet you know, so could President Nelson have received kind of a revelation that, like, you know, when that happens, bring him home, or it, that means yes, it, it's okay, um, because it, when you're prophet, it's like ah, uh, we need to keep missionary work going. So maybe that was kind of a sign for President Nelson, like, no, it's okay, uh, bring him home, go ahead and uh, make sure to follow all the guidelines and stuff. Don't feel bad for bringing them home. So, I don't know. That's just like, you know, something to think about. All right, continuing on. Therefore, hear this, O earth. The Lord, the Lord will not come to reign over the righteous in this world in 1843, uh, nor until everything for the bridegroom is ready. Of the Savior's words that no man knows the day or the hour of the coming of the Son of Man. Okay. Everyone knows this scripture. And there's so many times in the comments that people bring this up. It says... But of the day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And there's people that just like really fixate on that as though that is just like, uh, nope, uh, no one knows, never, ever, ever, no one can ever know. Nope. Um, well, look at this. The prophet asked, quote, did Christ speak this as a general principle throughout all generations? Oh, no. He spoke it in the present tense. No man that was then living upon the footstool of God knew the day or the hour, but he did not say that there was no man throughout all generations that should not know the day or the hour, for this would be in a flat contradiction with other scripture. For the prophet says that God will do nothing, but that he will reveal it unto his servants, the prophets. Consequent, consequently, if it is not made known to the prophets, it will not come to pass." End quote. And you can find that in, um, the reference for it here is words, pages 180 to 81. But it's also uh, in the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. Uh, the place where I go to, to read the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith is the scripture citation index. Um, so that's where you can find that. Now, interestingly, <clears throat> in uh, the October 2021 General Conference, so the conference just before this last one, uh, there was an amazing talk given by, um, it was Elder Christoffel Golden called Preparing for the Second Coming. And he uh, reiter reiterates this point. He says, in our preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ, I provide a vital comforting note for the faithful taken from the Old Testament prophet Amos. And then he reads uh, Amos 3. And then he, in his footnote, he clarifies this, that there's the Joseph Smith translation. So he's kind of like giving us a reminder, hey, uh, we're talking about the second coming here. And guess what? The Lord isn't going to do anything until he reveals it to the prophet. All right, so now let's read what Bruce R. McConkie says um, in um, Doctrinal New Testament Commentary. Uh, and this is a section on page 664, When Will the Son of Man Come? Okay, it starts out with some scripture. So let's go ahead and let's just read this. Um, but of that day and hour, no man, no, not any angels of heaven, but my Father, sorry, but of that day and hour, 
knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day of Noah, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And see, um, this kind of goes into the the concept of he will, he will come at a time that ye think not. Everything is just going to be going on like it normally is, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Right? It's not like the world's going to be like, oh my gosh, things are just getting so crazy and it, this must be happening. Now, for those that are watching, yes. For those that are watching, yes. Um, but for, it sounds like the majority of the people, and, and certainly the wicked, um, they're going to be caught unawares. All right, continuing. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, okay, now Matthew, okay, so that was Matthew 24, 36 to 39. Now we have Matthew 24, 43 to 45. But of that day and hour, no one knoweth. And then Bruce R. McConkie uh, highlight, well, you, you just look on the screen and you'll see the parts that he puts in bold. No one knoweth. No, not the angels of God in heaven, but my Father only. But <clears throat> as it was in the days of Noah, so shall so it shall be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Wait, so, hold on. I I don't know what this uh, IV is, because it's, it's I dot V dot. So I don't know if this is like a different version of the Bible. Now, these are different verses. So anyway, it just sounds very similar to what we just read, but it's, it is different verses. I don't know if the IV means some other version of the Bible, but w whatever. Okay. Uh, for it shall be with them as it was in the days which were before the flood. For until the day that Noah entered into the ark, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay. Um, but as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be also at the coming of the Son of Man. For it shall be with them as it was in the days which were before the flood until the day that Noah entered into the ark they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage and knew not until the flood came and took them all away oh sorry 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 I I have a cat that's climbing on me hold on for a second get off kitty ah. okay sorry okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read all this Let's just, let's just, because he, he does a few other ones, Mark, um, okay. Okay, so Matthew 24, 36, question, does or will anyone know when the Lord will come? Answer, as to the day and hour, no. As to the generation, yes. Okay, so Bruce R. McConkie, and I'm sure that this is probably the same view shared by all the general authorities, um, I don't think that a lot of a lot of what General what uh, Bruce R. McConkie said. I, I think that probably the rest of them are probably on the same page. Um, of course, you know things can be revealed, right? And then he could end up being wrong. Uh, that's what happened with blacks in the priesthood and stuff like that. And also the uh, Great and Abominable Church, his definition. So. I guess he can get things wrong, but I think that maybe up until that point, up until Revelation is received, they probably are mostly on the same page with him. So anyway, um, so as of the day and hour, no, but as to the generation, yes. Question, who shall know the generation? Answer, the saints, the children of light, those who can read the signs of the times, those who treasure up the Lord's words so they will not be deceived. And uh, frankly, I think that's um, you and me, everyone that's watching this channel. You're, you're probably watching this channel because you're trying to watch for the signs of the times. And we are observing fascinating things. There are things that are obvious to, I think, the world at large. Uh, you can look at the Christian world. They are, they are very in tune with uh, everything that's going on right now. Uh, but there's some things that are specifically 
uh, related to our church. Like what I just mentioned, Angel Moroni dropping his trumpet. Um, we have the two eclipses that are go specifically going over church sites. If you didn't catch the video that I did about it, the first eclipse went over all the major church sites in Missouri and also Kansas because uh, there's Fort Leavenworth. And uh, that if you go to the maps in the back of your scriptures and you look at the map for Missouri and you look at the map for um, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, between these two eclipses, all those little red dots, they get covered up by the two eclipses. And if the eclipses were uh, to deviate uh, just a few miles south, a few miles north, it would not do that. So I feel like that's a very specific sign to members of the church. So anyway, okay, Paul told the Thessalonians that, quote, the coming of the Lord would be, uh, quote, as travail upon a woman with child, end quote, that, there, that where people of the world are concerned, Jesus would come as a thief in the night, uh, that is unexpectedly and without warning, and I, I must say, there's a portion of the church, we know that there's wheat and tares. So the tares, the ones that are more like the world, they're not really, um, they don't have real testimonies. They, they may be doing church for some ulterior motive. They are they are the same as the people of the world. They, they do not know they're going to be caught unawares. So, um, okay. But where the quote-unquote children of the light are concerned, the Lord would not come as a thief in the night, for they are aware of the times and seasons connected with his return. Thus, though the saints do not know the day, uh, they are aware of the season. As a woman in travail feels the pains of the approaching birth, so the saints read the signs of the times, neither knows the exact moment of the anticipated happening, but both know the approximate time. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. Quote, I was once praying very earnestly to know the time of the coming of the Son of Man. The prophet Joseph Smith recorded on April 2nd, 1843. And that was the year that we read that uh, in the Ensign article, that was the year that Father Miller was um, really popular with his prediction. Okay, when I heard a voice repeat the following, Joseph, my son, if thou livest until thou art 85 years old, thou shalt see the face of the Son of Man. Therefore, let this suffice, and trouble me no more on this matter. I was left thus without being able to decide whether this coming referred to the beginning of the millennium, or to some previous happening, or whether I should die and thus see his face. I believe the coming of the Son of Man will not be any sooner than that time. Now that's in DNC 130, 14 through 17. Okay, quote, four days later, April 6th, 1843, at the general conference of the church, while the spirit rested upon him, the prophet said, now I didn't notice this before. This is interesting that he's saying this on April 6th at general conference. Uh, Were I going to prophesy, I would say the end would not come in 1944, five or six or in 40 years. There are those of the rising generation who shall not taste death till Christ comes. Okay, the rising generation is the one that has just begun. Thus, technically, children born on April 6th, 1843, would be the first members of the rising generation. And all born, however many years later, to the same parents, would still be members of that same rising generation. Okay, so think about that. Joseph Smith <clears throat> said that there are those of the rising generation who shall not taste of death till Christ comes. Okay, he continues, it is not unreasonable to suppose that many young men had babies at that time, at the time of this prophecy, and also had other children as much as 50 or 75 years later, assuming, for instance, they had married again to younger women. This very probable assumption would bring the date up to, say, the second decade of the 20th century. Okay, so what's the second decade of the 20th century? 
it's the 1920s. Can you think of anybody uh, in the church that uh, was born at that time? Uh, I can think of one, Russell M. Nelson. President Nelson was born September 9th, 1924. September 9th, 1924. He is part of this generation that's being discussed in this book by Bruce R. McConkie. So, uh, the second decade in the 20th century, and the children so born would be members of that same rising generation of which the prophet spoke. Now, if these children live to the normal age of men generally, they would be alive well past the year 2000. And uh, what what is everybody always, you know, talking about with President Nelson? Everyone's always talking about how good he looks for his age. Uh, if he makes it to his next birthday, he's going to turn 98. Right now, he's 97. And he doesn't seem to be showing any signs of slowing down. So, let's go back here. <clears throat> so, we are now in the year 2022. He very well could survive the next few years, uh, for all I can tell. You know, he, it looks like he's, gonna, he's still going strong. Okay, quote, This reasoning takes on added significance when considered in connection with the revelation which states categorically that Christ will come in the beginning of the 7,000 years of the Earth's temporal continuance. So meaning, you know, because we're now in the, uh, on the Gregorian calendar, we are now in a new millennium. Uh, we, of course, do not know exactly how many years elapse between Adam and the birth of Christ, but suppose it to have happened, um, suppose it ha to have been 4,004 uh, nor can we be certain from historical sources how many years have passed since. But reading these inspired statements in connection with the signs of the times, which we can interpret, it is plain that the day of the coming of the Son of Man is not far distant. This is a quote from, so he's quoting himself from Mormon Doctrine, pages 623 to 624. Okay. Uh... Let's just read the rest of this. Mark 13, 32, neither the son, okay, <clears throat> neither the son. So specifying that neither the son knows. Uh, these words are deleted from the inspired version. Oh, that's what IV stands for, inspired version. Jesus, of course, since he knows all things, knows the exact time of his return. So this is another big one because I get a lot of comments and it, it, it usually actually comes from like other Christians that sometimes stumble upon the channel. They'll be like, not even Christ knows when he's going to come. Well, uh, right here, this is what Bruce R. McConkie says, that of course he knows when he's going to come. Uh, Matthew 24, 37 to 39, and Luke 17, 26 to 28, the coming of the flood of Noah, and with it the, the quote-unquote end of the world for the carnal civilization of that day, is a perfect type of the coming of the Lord and the end of the world for the wicked of the latter days. In both days, uh, all the normal activities of life continue until deity intervenes to, to stay the mounting mass of iniquity. Luke 17, 28 to 30, by using, quote, the days of Lot to, top of, to typify his return, Jesus teaches the dreadful and destructive nature of that awful hour. It will be with it will be with the wicked as those in Sodom. All right. So <clears throat> that's what I had to share with you. Um, this whole thing about this generation that Joseph Smith spoke about, I had no idea about this, and that it could include Russell M. Nelson. You know, I don't know his genealogy, um, so I, I don't know his family history. I'm not going to, like, look that up, but, you know, because you could just take this with a grain of salt, but I, I I maybe wouldn't. You know, I believe Joseph Smith. I believe what he says. 
okay? Um, out of all the prophets, if there is one prophet that you can trust what he says, especially when he says that he's saying it uh, under, <coughs> excuse me, with the spirit of revelation, uh, he would be the one that you could trust for sure. For sure. Uh, again, it says right here, while the spirit rested upon him, the prophet said, were I going to prophesy, I would say the end would not come in 44, 5 or 6, <coughs> excuse me, or in 40 years. There are those of the rising generation who shall not taste of death till Christ comes. So make of that as you will. I believe it. You know, I, I don't know if you can specifically attach this to President Nelson, but I think it's certainly interesting that the prophet right now is a member of that generation. And he's about to become the oldest prophet or apostle of this dispensation. If he makes it to his next birthday, he will assume uh, that uh, status, that role, that title, um, because right now it's uh, David B. Haight. He's in the number one spot, but President Nelson is about to pass him up if he makes it to his next birthday. Fascinating. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.